Welcome back to my back garden, my worm farm over here, and uh, I managed to harvest some nice castings, which uh, haven't been through the filtering machine yet, but this is my black gold that I get out, and the reason I say it hasn't been through the filtering machine, usually I put it through this filter tumbler here, which removes all the large pieces, so you'll probably find that we get some butternut and some pumpkin maybe even some other tomatoes as well coming up inside this bed and there's nothing wrong with that I'll pull them out and put them back in pots and I'll use them again um, but I wanted to show you how I transplant my tomatoes now I've had these tomatoes sitting in these pots for about three two or three weeks um, I placed a nutri pop which is my own design it's essentially a ball of Okay, it's breaking apart now, but it's a, a ball of vermicast which I dry out and then when I put it in and it slowly dissolves and the nutrients are released. So it's a slow release nutrient that I've created. Now, when I plant, I want to plant them a little bit deeper because the hairs showing along the sides here, these will create more roots. So I'm going to plant them slightly deeper than an actual pot size. So let me just dig it out a little bit more. need about 20 liters of space around each tomato plant. I'm going to pack them a little bit tight because I want to get more in here. I've got more tomatoes than I actually need. I'm going to take a handful of my vermicast, throw it in the bottom of the hole, mix it up a little bit with what's in here. And then I'm going to take a tomato and I'm going to bury him. Don't want to disturb the roots too much, but I want to get a little more depth. So I'm burying it slightly below the line. Take out all these other little babies that are coming up. These were um, tomatoes that I grew from just taking a tomato and just slicing it. And taking the slices, putting the slices <laughs> into my um, pots and then... There you go, that was literally what I what I did. So I'm going to put them slightly below the surface line so that those hairs that are on there will be able to also grow roots and uh, they'll also end up making this plant nice and strong. So there's my tomato and I'll give it a good watering in just now. Let me do another one. It's a granadilla. I don't think it's going to survive. Sorry, my apologies. Not a granadilla. Cape gooseberry. There's a Cape gooseberry. I'm going to leave it. See if it manages to survive. But I think most of the nutrients here is going to be taken by the tomatoes. The idea with a raised bed is so that the roots don't stay too wet. And this spot is a good spot for me because it gets about six or eight hours of sunlight during most of the day from about 11 o'clock in the morning, usually till about three or four in the afternoon. So again, a nice handful of permacost in the hole, mix it in a little bit. tomato plant now there's two in here I'm only going to take the strongest of the two and again slightly below pull this baby out maybe I'll just stick him in the ground over here and if he comes up great and if he doesn't well I should have plenty more coming through. And again, bury it in. Uh, 
I'm going to top up the level of the soil afterwards and more than likely put some kind of a mulch in the top of it just to keep it moist but we're going into our rainy season pretty soon so I think I can keep an eye on it quite carefully and I don't want it to stay too wet because the last thing I need is for my roots to rot on me. It should be enough space for another tomato to come in over here. I'll take it closer to the side, give the roots some more space. Too much vermicast with tomatoes is not a good thing. I've done experimentation with it where I've done a 5% mixture, a 10% mixture, 25% mixture, 50% and then 100% castings and 100% castings completely failed. I found that the 15 and the 25 sort of that region so I would suggest 10, 15% no more per volume for a tomato plant to do really really well um, deciding which one to use I think what I might just do is put all three of these in because they're all looking no, I'll take one of them out here They're going to be very close together. I'm going to see which one does the best. And that one I will then keep. See, the roots are not root bound. They are there. Just loosen it a little bit so as not to disturb the root system too much. Bury him in. Again, slightly below the surface so that when I fill it up, I'm going to be touching on these roots that are showing and they can start making their own new roots. We've had some good rain the last couple of days. Soil's nice and moist. Don't think I'm going to have too much in the way of root shock. I see there's some interesting little hojos in here as well, which would probably end up eating my roots. But I'm going to put him into compost, into the worm farm. Let him do his thing in the worm farm there as well. 